What's going on, YouTube? We're going to look at cars. <laughs> been a, a while. As usual, we've been kind of spreading them out. Gives me time to kind of get my thoughts together in the next video and look at the cars that I've collected and see if we can make a nice little um, on screen presence with these vehicles. <laughs> so I got some mini GTs back there because I don't know, I felt like we'll have a little, a little something different in the background, but. We will look at a Mini GT, a new casting from them. But first, let's get the heavy hitters. We got pretty much all the major food groups this time. I got Auto World, M2, Greenlight, and Mini GT. So let's take a look. Let's get right into it. I'm going to have to see some familiar stuff. So I really like those Cougar Eliminators, the 6970 casting. The newer stuff, past year or so, Greenlight released it. Well, I saw this. This is kind of considered a peg warmer now. <laughs> but, you know, these are seen in multiples at the store. The only one left out of the series was, was sitting down for for a while. So, I like the casting so much I knew this was part of it. So, let's take a look. I was really impressed. It's one of Greenlight's better castings. Cougar, too. You know, Mercury Cougar. Not a car too many people have done. Racing Champions does it. That's another peg warmer, unfortunately. It kind of sits there. It's this kind of car, 6970 body style. Based off the Mustang, big block, small block, six cylinder, all sorts of cool engines. Really great, clean casting. Not a lot of issues. Separate bumpers. They did the Ford uh, wheel covers that were on those cars. Um, they would paint them slightly different for the different cars, the different manufacturer like Mercury Ford. But so prototypical, you know, nice looking wheel, hard top car, no vinyl roof, metallic paint. So you can see how nicely it lays. I think it looks really good. And uh, this is one of the better opening green light hoods, I must say. This is a 70 car, kind of like um, a high option car, but not a muscle car style pony car. Slash pony car. A little bit more dressed up. Got the white interior. The double white walls. Probably a V8 of some sort. Really good engine bay. We can look at that. It's got all the good detail. Air cleaner of course. Bracketry. Looks like air conditioning maybe. Power steering. Something like that. Fender supports from the firewall. That was another Ford thing. And they use this chassis. Changed it a little bit, but all the way to 73. You know, an extension of what originally came out in 64. Sequential taillights on Mercury's, I believe, still. Could have been an option, but ones I've seen are sequential. And uh, Cobra, Shelby, when he did the Ford Mustang conversions, he was actually using Mercury taillights. So they look familiar to you. And you're a Ford fan, Shelby, Cobra fan. Mustang, there it is. Kind of was able to raid the Ford's park bin. So yeah, we'll take a look at this Cougar. Pretty cool. Again, you want to kind of remember what the Eliminator version looks like. There it is. So, pretty neat. Versatile casting. You can see how they painted the wheels a little different, even though it's the same wheel cover. So you can see how cool the two look together. Almost like a his and hers <laughs> situation. So yeah, Mercury Cougar 1970. Very cool car. Cougar lasted with... Kind of transitioned from being Mustang. And moved up to being a Thunderbird counterpart. Kind of traded places. And then what came in with the Pony car was the Capri. And then they used that for a while. 86 was the last year for Mercury Capri. On the Fox body anyway. <laughs> the big data front wheel drive version. All right. Well, speaking of Fox body, there we go. <laughs> so this car is another one I kept missing. Um, first time I saw it, which was months ago, they've been kind of trickling this Hot Pursuit series out. It's all they've been getting in recently at the retailers. So I missed it the first time, and then I was like, I'll go after it. It seems to be a very popular vehicle. I think it's just because it's a nice white, basic, uh, early 80s car. By 82, they had the 5 liter back. Hot Pursuit Series, where are we at? 
Damn it. I always feel like to move them. On this, it's up here. 39. So we looked at some 38 series cars. But the, um, the emissions controls, uh, Dodge Diplomat from the CHP. We looked at that car last round, so I got this. These wheels are used also on the LTD Crown Victoria from the 80s. Um, and this, guys, though, I think it's a little more realistic. There's two styles of the steel wheel. This was the four lug on the Mustang. He used the four lug setup, front and rear, back then. And uh, that this wheel represents, I think, that kind of wheel more than the, the one used on the Planther car, which is the Crown Victoria. Let's open up the hood. Very big gap on this hood. So this car is painted white too, so you're going to see some ghosting on the panel gaps, things like that. Really good engine detail for the scale and the price point. Separate air cleaner with dual snorkel intake. So police version, um, even to this day, they'll take factory vehicles and make them and put them into police service for special uses, pursuit, whatever. Or undercover vehicles. They might not necessarily be a police package. But Ford, um, knowing with all the missions controls, the bigger cars, the Dodge Diplomat, the St. Regis, you know, the LTD, Ford Crown Victoria, uh, Caprice, Impala. These cars were bigger, heavier, sturdier cars, but they were getting, they were suffering with the speed. So alternatives were always being looked at in the 70s and 80s especially. During those dark emission controls ages, which, you know, to the benefit, they got rid of a lot of smog, so that's fine. But the technology had to catch up. One of the ways to get around that is, even if your net horsepower is almost the same as something that you could put in a police package, four-door, the car was probably half the weight, maybe. So, there we went, and we were able to catch up with some fast vehicles. Corvette was fast, but we're talking a little bit more exotic stuff, like... Uh, Lamborghini and Porsche and things like that motorcycles these are the things that these cars would probably be used for metropolitan areas are going to have a lot of different spread of income so some people are able to afford very fast vehicles this is an Arizona car very simple detail again this is the first iteration of the Fox that went through a, a few different updates this is one of the first designs of the fox um, on this platform here tail lights were different in the early years the window treatment back here changed in the later years to be more of a window and less trim and of course the hood the front end that all changed if you see the seam here if you, this all came out now you can swap to different um, updated bumpers that's why they're kind of popular you almost have to know the VIN <laughs> dot it to make sure the year you're looking at is actually associated with the body panels. Five liter again. So I went to the smaller displacement V8 for a couple years to get around some emissions, I believe. Things like that, maybe fuel economy. But they eventually brought the five liter back pretty quickly. I think it was one to three years is when the smaller V8 came out. And then they went right back to the five liter had an inline six and a V6 during these years as well. Five speed transmission, manual. A lot of times with the early police packages, especially, they were actually shifting gears on these cars. They weren't using automatics. And then um, four speed automatic too on the Ford platform in the later years. And Fox went all the way to 1993, 1992 in that zone. And then by 94, we had the updated body style. So there we go. We took a look. Got a few of these. I got a CHP. I got a um, Nevada Highway Patrol. Now I got Arizona. So I got a few of those Fox cars. <laughs> All right. Next. Well, there's another great one for the for the collection. Big long, uh, long roof fan. This is a 76 Pontiac Grand Le Mans Fosfari, so it's going to be a car that Pontiac would have had more options on. You had a Le Mans Safari and Grand Le Mans. Grand Le Mans was the higher equipment. The Series 7 Estate Wagons, this car comes in a gold. We had a gold, but it was solid. It had the full wheel covers that this car had, but it was a solid paint scheme, and it was not two-toned with the 
fake wood grain. So let's take a look. These are some of, again, I believe, Greenlight's really good castings worth putting in the collection. A standout, because really no one has done this vehicle on scale before, a Colonnade General Motors A G body car. Uh, this is pretty, pretty, uh, preceded <laughs> the G uh, A, so I believe these are A bodies, and shared with back then Buick Century, Regal, Monte Carlo, Cutlass, Le Mans, and I says Bonneville, but I don't remember seeing Bonneville on this body, but I could be wrong. Most of the estate wagons have opening tailgates. This was a big GM thing, although a lot of manufacturers had it, but especially General Motors, and they kept it all the way into the 80s G-bodies. Having the taillights on the bumper there left us free to be kind of free of all wiring, <laughs> of all taillights and things like that. Um, of all the wagons that were like the Buick, the Olds or whatever, mostly this part of the vehicle there was going to be different but the glass doors especially the expensive section back here to tool mostly the same um sometimes this piece here i think was slightly different certainly the the doghouse front clip could be swapped around 76 had a little bit more open grill than the 77 i believe this style pontiac I believe it was 75 76 77 Somewhere in there. Malibu, too. So they kind of flipped these wheels around. Unfortunately, when they sprayed the white wall on this car, the tires were not matched. Uh, they had one profile on one side and then that. So I do have some parts tires. I got a few, so we'll get that switched. Um, but the sombrero type full wheel covers look very good. They're chrome. If you use this car, pocket car, like I'll take cars around, you know, some that I get in that's new I want to check out for a while or some old favorites along with me, that chrome will come off. So my philosophy is, and we'll see this on when we get to the auto world, you know, some of this paint wears down, maybe you scratch it or get a nick. So I do know what I'm doing with these cars. I plan for it. Um... I'll get a second one if it's a very important casting to me, you know, and it'll be boxed, and we can either customize this, take wheels off, things like that, in the future or right away, but now I want to feel bad about it. <laughs> I mean, be personally as a collector. Some people get one car and play with it, and they don't care. It's really up to whoever is using the vehicles, what they want to do, and, and uh, we should all be free to do what we want, right? So... Another car that's been in Greenlight's catalog probably before any car that you're looking at today is this one. 1969 Charger Daytona. Plymouth had their version, the Plymouth Superbird. But based off the Charger or the Plymouth GTX Roadrunner, uh, depending on Plymouth or Dodge, that's more realistic of that picture there. If you look, that green, that's really what this green is supposed to be. Well, you can see the difference. And that really does quite look like that in person. So, a little off, but I still liked it. More of a Kermit green, if you will. And then we got the green interior. So, I always like green cars. This is the Barrett Jackson. They also do meet them, so they have two auctions going simultaneously. You know, they'll have uh, licensing for both. They like to spread their chips all over the place. Series 8. Recent one, and it goes over, you know, most of these cars were big black Mopar. I don't think they offered anything lower than a 383 on the Daytona. The car was made for NASCAR. It was a homologation car. Here in the States, we ran NASCAR. Cars had to be based off production vehicles, much like turning car series overseas. Uh, we were had a lot of two-door coupes, and that's kind of what we ran. You know, a lot of other countries would run the four-door just because maybe the engine was bigger, I don't know. But two doors a lot of times, and there was an aerodynamic and horsepower war that coincided with the production on the street muscle car. So a lot of development was aimed towards NASCAR. They could do a little bit more development quicker than sports car prototype series. You know, they would still use American power, but it would be a more of a limited basis. You had a lot of vehicles running in this series, 
and all the major manufacturers were pretty much able to participate. So making a bigger engine, you know, a head change, you know, whatever engineering you wanted to do, suspension, brakes, good test ground for it. So push and pull. So Ford came out with the tunnel back on the Torino. I believe the Ford did this first. And uh, they saw the improvement, the other manufacturers. So the first iteration of the Charger was they flushed the window and then took that big scoopy front end and that cupped front end and made it flush first. Charger 500 was the result. Then after that, you know, again, they were push and pull. Who was the most dominant? And then it came up to this, doing the pointy nose and the wing. The wing being high, supposedly, because you had to be able to open the trunk. <laughs> I don't believe they were able to attach the wing through the trunk or something like that. This was quite strong, a lot of downforce, and they actually had to tie this in with the rest of the vehicle. This this made a big difference, I guess, is so what I've told and what I've read and heard. You Daytona fans can um, <laughs> comment below. The other thing... Um, is these areas here not necessarily scoops or air extractors but on the charger daytona race car the one that had the tube chassis clip and all that the suspension travel really would beat the inner fender up so this was really for tire clearance believe it or not and uh they had to make the same kind of thing here of course on a production charger they don't know you don't probably need all that suspension travel because the car's not as slammed and there's that front end with the small air intake uh, i believe these were vacuum operated not electric but again comment below and this is a relic of the olden days copyright 2007 so really the first few years of green light and we can see the remnants of using the huge steamroller tires see all that clearance right there so we've m moved on to really green lights really good magnum 500 wheel um so these look really good they work on a variety of vehicles the mustangs also took really well to this wheel the entire setup they just added the post to give us a little bit of bit more correct back spacing this is a car that pr came pretty well out of the box i did not feel the necessary need to tweak this car at all doesn't really need too much so we'll leave it be and call it a win not get nuts i mean i could probably adjust the back spacing a little bit like that you know from that but that's about it there we go oh <laughs> and one more thing small engine the other tell of the early days you could see the well very loose hood which is good you can get it up you can see in there let's see not a lot of detail everything's painted but it's there and it's deep and uh big block looks very tiny doesn't it <laughs> all right back up here well another casting that's new but they've been doing the old shotgun blast of all you know, they'll, they'll throw this casting in Hobby Shop and the Great Outdoors and maybe uh, the <laughs> the Hollywood series. And sometimes they'll do Hobby Shop again and then just keep going. I think two Hobby Shop releases already. 91 Sonoma ST. So it's the GMC, not the Chevy version, which is the S10. But it's in the ST package. So it's that monochromatic package. You know, they were doing this in late, late 80s. Into the early 90s, they were starting to paint the bumpers, the trim, all the same color. And uh, they extend the kind of, um, you know, they'll, they'll gussy it up, an older an older design. You know, when you do this, it makes it look a lot more modern with a low cost. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, comes with a gas pump. We've all looked at that before. But yeah, press steelies. They did a really good job on this white paint. Doesn't have the ghosting nearly as much as the Mustang that we looked at. And these, where these are assembled, kind of like the Barrett Jackson car, not a lot of crap on the windows. You know, very cleanly done. There's not a lot of flashing. The paint is applied well. There's no grease on anything. So there you go. I think this is one of my favorite S10s. We're going to have to fix the wheels and tires. They're completely bent on the axles. There's a lot of force needed to push these. You know, if it's a virgin pressed wheel, it's going to have a pretty tight clearance. 
And a lot of times that's the issue when they're just slamming these wheels on. The jig might not be aligned or the person doing it might be doing it by hand. And, you know, if you're not completely square pushing this down, it's going to go crooked. So we'll look at how this car rolls. You can see the issue there. But not too hard. You just throw those axles out and put new ones on. And uh, take a, a pin vise drill and just kind of clean it up. It's not a difficult at all. Or, if you're not a person to really move these vehicles around and just like to display them or keep them in the pack, it's not even going to make a difference, <laughs> will it? Because, I mean, if you have it like this, you can't tell it's, it's crooked. So, you know, to each their own. It might be a not big problem for anybody. For me, that's what I do. That's what I like doing. This is a great vehicle. I think it looks really good. And, uh, you know, we can compare it to the old pre-update grill, which S10 shared with the GMC they just kind of just changed what went in the middle so you can see the difference there and we have a four-wheel drive quote-unquote one but again whether it says it's a four-wheel drive or possibly a two there's no difference and in real life you could there very was a short on the stock ones on these bodies You'd, you'd have a, you know, a more of a stance, but very slight, and you'd have to really look. A lot of them trucks were like that, the mini trucks. You could, when you looked at the four-wheel drives compared to the two-wheel, very slight difference in a lot of cases. A lot of cases was like that. All right, so, I digress. We're going to talk a lot too much on these castings. We've got a few more to go. Got some trucks. Here's a brand new one to the scene. Um, this one I wanted to take a look at. I was curious. Didn't like it. First time I saw it, so I passed it. And then I said, you know what? This is a first of a first. So let me get it. Let me check it out. Let's see if there's any surprises. There was. So we'll take a look. I'm and I'm not talking yet about the Cadillac. The Cadillac four-door is coming. Very excited for it. It looks very superb. So I hope we can get that soon. But... What I'm alluding to is a 73 Chevrolet Chevelle Malibu. 73 was first year for the Colonnade cars. The Colonnade cars had that kind of roof profile that was shared over a few vehicles. The Century, the Regal, the Monte Carlo, Cutlass, Le Mans, all that stuff. So let's take a look. This is off the Drive movie. I think that's the Ryan Gosling one. Whatever. I don't think it was the Ryan O'Neill, Tatum O'Neill. I don't know. The ones from the 70s. There's a bunch of these. Opening hood this time. Um, chrome wheels that they share. That I've seen they put on some other vehicles. Like the square body trucks. So very beefy wheel. Decent. Um, well. I'd say the body's pretty good. I think the wheel entire package. Once I adjust it will look really even better. 454. Uh, 454, I think, maybe in 73 was available. They had the SS. Then they had a Laguna. So they had, like, a, a Chevelle. They had Malibu. They had Laguna. Um, once they dropped SS in 76, uh, they called it Laguna S3. And that was the one with that goofy front end. Again, something for NASCAR. They sloped this. And they used sort of that rubberish, fiberglass-ish type front end the endura bumper type stuff that was that soft rubberish thing that they molded to the front kind of like the front clip of a firebird or a camaro of the period something like that chevrolet wanted to again quote unquote and do some sports car pedigree so they used the circular tail lights that they used on the corvette camaro things like that this one has these big straight pipes coming out there they're kind of misaligned and they hang down a little bit so they're kind of funny Easy to clean this up. I'd probably rip those right off. Probably take unused a quarter of that length and then button it back up. And right under the bumper, I think it will look just fine. Right height's a little high, but not terrible. I think with a smaller gauge tire, a little bit smaller wheel, we're in business. So I'm going to probably play with this one. Let's take a look at the front end. This car would have had inline six cylinder and then a few V8s. You know, like a small block. And I think big block was available. I think once the missions really came on strong after 73, 74, I think the 400 uh, 
Chevy was was the top motor. Uh, and again, this came in the wagon, so you can see kind of the resemblance. Even though this is a coupe, you know the windshield doghouse things like that, you could probably swap it with this because uh, they use the same thing. So two door, four door wagon, no convertible. Convertibles are kind of on their way out for a, a smidgen on the domestic market cars until the 80s came back so there we go laguna is a cool car i mean this is a neat casting i'm glad i got it we'll take a look i guess at the engine it kind of went backwards on the detail it does not look like those mercuries we're looking at it's good but seems to be a little lacking don't you think what do you think i don't know it's not too bad i guess it's a little bit auto world-ish which is nice so that's a good comparison oh the other thing that's kind of great look at that they finally made this this uh, inner core support here, the radiator, look at that, it's solid all the way through. I mean, not solid, but you can go through that. How neat is that? That's pretty cool. So that would have been like that on the real car, see through. That's pretty cool. So we just got to be able to get this down. What's holding that up, I don't know. I haven't inspected it yet, but definitely needs to be adjusted. What do you think? Okay, old Chevelle Malibu. Well, we're going to get to the hitch and tow, and then we're going to move right into some other vehicles. Oh, and also a Plymouth. We'll look at one Plymouth, too, and Auto World. So let's get this truck out of the way. And if you were on Instagram recently, seeing the old MIGS Instagram, uh, this, this vehicle, as well as the brown one, was going traveling with me. So look at the adventures <laughs> that we went on last week. Um, and... Uh, Tell me your thoughts, if you like that. Sometimes I'll take these vehicles around. Well, I always do. It just depends on which ones I like the most. So this is our set here. I, I, I re rescued this one. This is the one that comes with the Lincolns. Release 4 version A. This is the blue. I haven't found uh, the other color to this. Uh, it's the black and red or orange. So, But this thing has been... Um, I've been using it. You can see it's, it, the paint will wear. Again, that's why I alluded to when I was talking about that car. If you carry things around and really love them, they're going to show a little bit of... They're going to show that love. I'll put it that way. So, yeah, I'll get a second and third or whatever. Whatever I can round up. But, yeah, I mean, the square bodies are my favorite. And these 80s trucks with these paint schemes are some of my favorite. I think I like these even better than the 70s ones that I have right now. All black. We've gone over these trucks multiple times. We'll just take a little look. They did a great job. You know, and don't mind the flaking paint. That's all me. But they did a wonderful job on everything. I put my wheel spacers in there so the truck looks accurate now. I really hope, and I'll comment this way, that they do a long bed. That would be excellent. Next round, uh, after the 85s come out, which actually they're out. I just haven't got those either yet. I try to get them locally. I really have good luck, but i got to be diligent and always try to look every so often so I don't miss them. But I usually get most of them. And then the ones I don't find, I give up, actually. <laughs> and then I, for some reason, they come back months later. So that's kind of been the, the scene for the past year or two on these. I'll get the exclusives online, things like that, but I try to just kind of come as I go and kind of keep that hunt alive more than anything. It's more like a sport now to me um, than anything else. It's part of it. But yeah, love the truck. One of my favorites. And uh, this one and this one were kind of dueling in the desert there. So yeah, take a look. This one actually <laughs> held up pretty good. I was keeping this blue and round. I really do like that truck, but the brown one's nice too. You can see a very little difference between 84 and 83. On the real truck, there was slightly differences, but not enough to show up in the 164 scale that we're talking about. So yeah. All right. We've talked about that truck so many times, or that casting, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay, hitch and tow, yes. And then we will move on to some trucks. And the Mini GT is going to be the ending. Look at this. So 
it's a little different than the actual one that comes out of the case. I kind of got ahead of myself and customized it slightly. I'm not done. As you can see, it's all over the place. So I really had this ride height, these wheels. Okay, this is my green one. I talked about when we looked at this one, what I really wanted to do. And uh, I really like this simple gray. Don't usually get hitch and toe because it usually gives me a casting I already have. Many of the times I just have to have a trailer or a certain colored vehicle. Or that's a casting I collect, like the Le Mans, let's say. But I try not to just collect them just because. Um, this one had a really good paint scheme, very plain. And I liked how they have the painted top instead of the black. So that was something that attracted me as well. Gladiators are a cool vehicle. Um, of course, they're making the V8 finally um, on the Wrangler. And I can't remember if the Gladiator also is going to get the 392. So I put the uh, Hot Wheels Real Rider off-road bead locks on it in gold. I actually took them off the Matchbox Open Top Gladiator to see how it looked. And I actually liked it better than the black. They're going to be making a lot of wheels. Or actually, I'm excited to tell that I've seen on Instagram. Hot Wheels is going to release Real Riders just by themselves. So we don't have to cannibalize cars anymore. They're starting out with their most you know, um, popular rims, like the car chromed out car wheels not the off-road stuff but i'm sure the off-road stuff will follow and when you get off-road versus street you can always swap them it's the same size rim so you can make whatever off-road or whatever like i could put street tires on this and that looked pretty cool on some sort of like old jdm classic or something like that so that's what i kind of like and they roll perfect because they're machined a lot better they're molded a lot better they're always straight There's really no casting defects so they look good on even a more detailed vehicle than a hot wheels for instance they really transcend basically everything i mean you could put on a mini gt or some of the new chinese brands that look really cool right now they work with a lot of things so once i get the backspacing do it dialed in it'll look great I'm going to paint the fender wells black. Right now they're just showing bare metal, so that doesn't look very realistic. But once it's all blacked out, it's going to look good. I do this for adjustment. I don't necessarily have to make a full bar. I'll make some clips. In this instance, I didn't want a severe lift because these tires aren't that big. If I was running bigger tires, I'd run a bigger lift. Right now, a lot of times with green light, I've been getting a lot of luck just resting the axle on the base. The base is usually straight across. If we look at this one that's not lifted, you can see it's just a flat space. So resting an axle on that is pretty easy. You're just going to make that run the super glue on the outside edges so it's not interfering with this travel here. Let that set up, and then you're ready to rock. Again, if you need to break that, it's great. Uh, plastic and metal, they bond but not super strong, so you can always take a little needle nose and just kind of tweak it, and it'll bust right off, and you can start over. Uh, as long as you're not putting too much glue on always start with a little bit about a glue try to get it pretty good and then once it sets up take a look sometimes when you do it you're not paying attention when you roll the car it's gonna you know have a pull to it, it might roll right to the left and that's because these aren't perpendicular so you just got to take your time and it's not gonna be permanent permanent you can still lift it off and then once you really like something it's set up good Try to reinforce it with some a little bit more glue. You know, you might want to put a more piece of plastic in there. And it's pretty durable. And if you don't like it too, <laughs> and you want to swap parts or do another vehicle, feel free. Just bust it right off. I took, I stole this from the 1941 lifted truck, which I haven't played with yet. I think that looks good. So we got that going. And what does it come with? Well... Let's look at the package real quick because I ran right to this is a 2020 Gladiator with the Lanyard Safari uh, Series 23. And then these are the vehicles that come on there. Of course, some good ones. The Tahoe looks good. Bronco looks good. But that Jeep is sweet. Um, so I'll probably get the white Rubicon with the little. Uh, I didn't take the landing gear off of this thing. Uh, hitch and toe does not come with the accessories like the hitched homes does like this usually has the awning with the holes drilled in that was another reason i specifically got this is traveling down the road and you don't want to see holes so this is a clean uh airstream no holes in it no pinstripe nothing just straight up nice casting 
So that was another reason I picked this up. I thought it was kind of cool. You can see there the land yacht. So no interior on these. They have these black plastic windows that look like tint. This is a good casting, pretty sturdy. The only thing that, that breaks on these is this. So I had one that I broke this off, and I just ended up busting off the other pieces. It's not, it's not focusing. Hold on. Problem, everybody's problem. Everybody's, everybody's problem. So there, so they look good now. So I'll try to try keep this one around town here and not go out of town. We'll use the other one for that. So, and also I got to fix out the roll, the run out on these wheels and axles are a little crooked. Same issue, you know, tight hole there and you push on that old axle and it'll bend. Plastic base too on these, they're not metal. So, but great detail, wonderful detail on these. And with the Jeep, it's not quite level. So the Jeep is probably not going to be pulling this. I think I'm going to use the off-road trailer for a Jeep. This land yacht's going to go with a more classic vehicle like this. So, if that looks like a nice setup, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That would be a fun trip with those two. All right. Well, what are we doing now? Well, let's park this Jeep here and let's try to set the offset. So, at least on camera, this looks like it's finished. <laughs> okay. Well... Well, let's look at one more car because this old girl is stuck in the box for a while. And I used I didn't really ever get this Barracuda casting from M2, but this color I really liked. So let's open this up. This has uh, never been touched. This is one of 8400. And again, I'll try to put all these car descriptions below. So if you don't want to pause the video or uh, backtrack and write notes down or what what, what it is I'll, I'll put it down i try to put not only the car but the release that it's come from so i'll save you some time typically you can copy and paste that and just put it in any you know die cast dealer that you like or ebay whatever you want just google a lot of times i've come across new and existing die cast websites just by googling the car i want to buy and a lot of times it will pull, pull up a Google search, but a lot of times it'll just, it'll take me some random place that uh, sells the car. So you never know. You know, it could even be like some like auto parts store or something. Like you just don't know what ha what happens. So if you're feeling lucky and you want to kind of see what's out there, try a search, kind of like a random search like that. Because uh, there's always people, you know, making new websites or retailing these things it's not hard to do wholesale on this stuff you just got to pay a bunch of money you know, that's probably the truth of everything this has been in m2's catalog for a while early barracuda car based off the valiant and volair well what was this yeah it's valiant back then yep uh sort of i mean a little bit better a much tighter car the cuda was always a car that was a sports car they wanted plymouth was like this is, has a v8 but it also can handle it's a pony car it's going to be you know going around curves things like that they made the famous e-body car 1970 you know kind of led into branched off the challenger as well but yeah this is the first one had the fastback they had a formula s too which is a sports package car 340 was a great motor it was like gm's 327 just a great good engine good power on it and uh one of chrysler's good ones and i believe 340 was a small block car uh 318 also was on that block i believe full steel base and this this funny blue color with the blue interior I think the blue interior needs to be changed a little bit. I might spend some time on this car and kind of gussy it up. I really like the red lines on it. I like the old Mopar Steelys that they use. Um, even though M2 will put this on a GM and a Ford product with the Steelys, this is the you know the one that looks the best is when you have it on a Chrysler car because if you look at those caps, which aren't completely painted out, that's a Chrysler cap, so... If I ever did see one. Really tiny grill and headlights. That's uh, exaggerated. It almost looks like it's a Barris Custom. So the Barracuda, that was one of the problems with this casting is that this grill and the surround really should be pushed out a little bit further. Thinner, thin and thinned. This front end's kind of weak too. 
Um, and the headlights, obviously, are tiny. They almost look like someone resto modded this and put in those projector beams. <laughs> Uh, but the, it's a cool car. So in the back, the tail light looks great. Charger also had big tail light like that. So I do like the car. I mean, these are fun. And for a driver's car, you know, you can get the bigger block muscle cars, things like that. But they're a little bit sloppier than this. Put eight cylinder in this car. It's like the Darts. Uh, great, great driver. You know, it was a little bit lighter, but still you could put big power in it. You make big power to, at a small block Mopar too. Nothing wrong with that. 300 horsepower is very easy to do. And it won't, you know, kill your car and blow up everything else. You know, 300 horse in these cars is not bad. <clears throat> Even though they're bigger cars that might be the size of a, a contemporary car today, they weren't as heavy. Believe me, cars today have a lot of weight in them. They really do. Opening doors, too. Full dress M2. So... Again, M2 just tries to throw it at the wall. They want to get everything. The, the detail, the opening hood, the color, the, the wheel. They try to do everything. And, of course, if you try to do everything, as we know, if you do everything at you know, a $30 car, $50 car, you can get most of it right. When you do it at a $6, $10 car, we know that there's going to be something happening that, <laughs> that might not convey what the actual car looks like. Uh, we've seen that before. Not complaining. I still love the thing. A lot of people might misconstrue these comments and criticisms. It's just something I notice, you know. Uh, I think that's what makes collecting fun for me, personally, is that I go after try to get perfection at a price. We, we could always pay $100 for a 164 scale car. I probably love it. But it almost seems like what they can do with technology and make these cars cheaper and great. And I think the one that's good, we're going to look at it, you know, we're going to get there. Well, you know what I'm talking about, that Mini GT, I think they do a really bang up job. Alright, we're getting there, we're going to do some trucks. So let's back these vehicles out a little bit, get some area here. So, um, 2019 step van. If you looked at this truck and said it was 2019, you'd probably slap me, you'd say, no way, this thing's 1978 at, you know, at the earliest. Well, this type of vehicle, as unaerodynamic as it might be, is something that's very uh, economical when you're doing certain transportation duties. Uh, namely, you know, potato chips, but in this case, it's police officers or their equipment. This is auxiliary patrol from NYPD. This has their auxiliary reverse colors. It's not going to be white with blue. It's going to be blue with white. We've looked at this many months ago, this truck, that I did a redo on in terms of the chassis. I moved the axle forward on the front. To square it up with the wheel well. Put some more realistic wheels on it. This is how they come out of the box. All these bread vans. Step vans. Whatever you want to call them. These aluminum vans. This wheel here is always pushed back for me. Now when you look at these trucks. Yes it's close. But it needs to be moved forward slightly. So that's the tilt front hood. I think Ford, Chevy, GM. I don't know. Or Chevy. Chrysler, I can't remember. I know they can make it different motors. You can get compressed natural gas, propane, diesel, uh, gasoline. I think all those type of motors are available or fuel types. This is a very good looking one though. I like the blue over white. Um, it does not have the front bull bars on it, but it does have a um, uh, light on the top, which this one doesn't. This one's kind of more like a delivery kind of thing. So this is kind of interesting. And I left these doors open. They kind of operated well. Same type of rear end. Um, they just put the reflectors on this one. So I like this truck. This is kind of cool. So we'll probably get a hold of some wheels and tires for this and move the front axle up slightly like this one. But that's it. And I might not even get to it very, very quickly. I must say. Fixed door doesn't move, but that's all right. Really cool van. Makes a great background for a layout. Um, I have the plain one. Don't yet have the USPS one. Not the one with the flames on, but just the normal one. Probably should try finding that. And I also have the USPS one, so I just need the UPS one. FedEx hasn't given me a license. I don't think Amazon has not either. People have asked about it. I have not seen those give out licensing, so 
we shall see what happens. Maybe they're going to want to get on the bandwagon eventually. <laughs> so this this police vehicle, we'll put it over here because it, she takes up a little bit of space. And you know what? Why don't these guys go back there and watch the lot for us while we're finishing up? I think that's a plan. Well, let's look at this. This is a kind of a combination new stuff from Greenlight on existing chassis. Um, where we got 2019 Mac Granite dump truck in the Indianapolis DPW livery. So I said I got to get two of these, and I got lucky. I got one of them, and then right next to it was a one that was crushed. Um, the box was completely mangled, but the the vehicle was intact. Sans mirrors did not have mirrors on the side. So let's look at the, what it looks like out of the package And I'll show you what I did with the secondary one that I got for a song. It was like four or five dollars And you we all know that the SD not the HD the SD are the expensive ones They can go from I don't know 13 to 20 bucks depending on where you're at Movable dump bed they remove the tailgate on the dump bed and they install this new kind of piece here which is a plastic insert but it's kind of how they do it in real life drop in the salt box here with the spreader control and the beacon light it's got it all it looks very good let's take a little dump action here it's got the piston piston pivots here it's kind of weird I don't know if that's like that in real life I have no idea I felt like it was piston here but it goes into that not up here so dump drivers let me know so all white wheels a little bit lacking on the paint detail and i'll see i went through one and we'll look at it but so they don't paint this matte granites always have this kind of blackish gray and this is a heavy a lot of chrome this is again a municipal vehicle they're not going to be blinged out they're going to go for a bid you're going to kind of get a a price on these so you you typically not gonna see a lot of chrome secondary um what's funny is in green lights sd catalog they have the bigger um international work star or whatever it is that chassis is really what indianapolis uses for their for their uh, dpw the plow trucks especially you know they'll, they'll run dump trucks during the rest of the year but then they turn them into plows so this this uh, double or triaxle setup in the back with the tag really running on the international so that it greenly has that they have a international dump truck like this they could have put the plow on that would have looked more accurate now indianapolis to my knowledge has mac granite but it looked like a single axle dump truck so a shorty and they do have the plow front end, but it was kind of a composite of both dump trucks. So I guess they were like, no, we'll, we'll make the Max. I guess they're more popular. Let's take a look. There it is. Now that's accurate. That's the way their DPW trucks look. White with the Indy flag right there. Circle City. So I thought that was cool. And then they got the Mac. Um, oh. Rearview mirrors. Thought that was neat. Look at that. <laughs> and the Mac horns. They say Mac and the Mac Bulldog. Now this part here where it's white, that kind of looked good in the pictures from the real ones. Again, it's missing detail there. But the salt box and the way the pr truck presents itself is great. Fixed plow does not move, but it does scrape the bottom. So if you want to run it along the snow, it will will do its job you can use this screw right here and it'll pop this out so you don't have to break anything or bust glue up hard or anything like that you can take the plow off pretty quickly so this is how it comes out of the box let's look at what it looks like when it's detailed now I pulled the plow off this one so let's take a look at just the plow if you're kind of curious about that that double V plow so it doesn't move um, it would have been quite expensive to do something like that so i'm not even complaining whatsoever i mean it looks fine so i took the plow off you can see the truck i did the fender the color i also painted the wheels the hubs fully black in there instead of doing the just the top of it so you could see when i do these hubs there see how much better that looks so i matched all the wheels and i painted it more realistic so i did satin black all in there it's kind of what they look like. I've done some photo reconnaissance on these. 
So that got all kind of painted. So I think that looked a lot better. Paint the wheels up and got the fenders rolling. And I think we got a truck. So, and also straighten the tires and wheels. They will have some flashing on the rubber. And when the wheels are on the axles, they're not going to be completely straight. So that all got tuned up. And now this truck is awesome. And uh, it's one of my favorites, especially since it's an Indianapolis truck. So I thought that was kind of cool. I glued this on. This was loose. That was about it. Everything else turned out well. We can see the front end a little bit better. What do you think? I like this truck. It looks good. So slowly but surely I'll tweak these trucks. They're more expensive if you're playing with wheels and tires though because you know you're going to be spending 10 to $15 on these things at a time. So you kind of have to pick and choose your battles. Now I did buy the C60 Chevys. Um, the uh, propane and the grain truck, but I've already taken them apart, so they're not ready for the camera yet. <laughs> uh, they'll just be in a pile, so we'll look at those next time. We'll have those out. So, well, we looked at these little Max now for the best part here, in my opinion, tonight or today or whatever you're looking at this video. Is the Mini GT4 GT500 Shelby? Look at this thing. This thing is amazing. Now, I did tweak this. This had some issues, unfortunately. Nothing big. Nothing big. I waited for the Miho exclusive to come out. So, um, just because it was, you didn't have to wait for it to go from China and all that. And they have a lower production, as you can see. 3600 here. You could still get them in the box. There's some importers. I'll bring them in and then sell them on eBay, the international box. So it could probably might get one of those as a backup. But this thing's awesome. Now, you might have seen the other video reviews on this or pictures. Um, the length of the axle on this car is correct, but it it lets the wheels go side to side too much. So I did make spacers for it. They're really thin, but you can see them in there. So I set up spacers in this vehicle. I straightened the axle. Uh, one of the wheels was bent on the axle. Um, there Again, there's a tight fit. So when they placed these wheels on the axle, it was bent. So that is all fixed. I put new axles on. And this thing is sitting awesome. And the only other thing, too, is there was some flashing under this piece. This piece is plastic. It gets set into the body, this, this lower intake piece. And that was protruding, so I, I busted that off and cleaned it up, and now it's almost as flush as its counterpart. So it looks pretty close. If I hadn't said anything, probably wouldn't even noticed. Um, they're using that photo etch style insignia, as you can see the Cobra in the, the grill there. That is like chrome, so that looks realistic, super realistic. You can see the shine going off on it. Um, separate headlights uh, this car is the third generation shelby gt that was made from ford at the first second and third this is considered the third gen um, started in 2015 but the shelby gt 500 on this platform started from 2019 now this has the blown motor in it they're using that voodoo 5.2 liter it's kind of a very very updated five liter coyote engine aluminum but completely different setup i mean they only begin in the casting section where the block is made and then they diverge quickly from that uh the 5.2 is really much different uh now unfortunately with the bigger power on the roots blower it's got a two and a half liter blower on it i mean such a big blower or 2.6 liters roots blower uh, 700 horses, a little over 700. What are we, what are we talking about? Like 760? It's just nuts. Something like that. Yeah, 760 horse. And, uh, they always offer manuals. It's the first time they don't have a manual, um, that would not grenade itself. So they don't have a manual transmission supplier yet for it. So it's a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Still pretty badass because dual clutches when they're set up, especially with high horsepower, eight cylinders, do nothing better. I mean, they sound awesome. It's just that, you know, you got to sit in that car and you got the dial for the for the automatic. It's kind of 
for purists, it's not the best, but it's okay. A lot of horsepower. Uh, 295 front section tire. So almost a 300 front section on this front end. One of the biggest fronts uh, available. You know, again, they're going to do that like the Corvette too. You know, when the Corvette was a front engine car, they really had to run that tire big because Camaro, same way. You got to be able to turn that weight in the front and uh it's heavy i mean i know it's aluminum but when you put that blower on there it's gonna have weight the other thing that this body style did was even though the stock mustang already is very you know they push the hood down and they make the fenders really as close to the top of this tire as they can this is even more sculpted so when shelby took the design they really brought this hood down over the blower dropped the hood down and then made these fenders really squ squished down even more so than the regular gt mustang so it's just an awesome car they're going to be a black with white stripe coming out there's going to be a white car with a blue stripe so there's going to be some race variants with some liveries so i'm probably going to get most of them i mean this is a great casting wheels are supposed to be carbon fiber uh, in this you can't really tell but they do the carbon fiber for the wing so that's there again this car retails anywhere between 12.99 13 bucks to 15 16 some people try selling for 20 they've made chase cars there's an ultra ultra raw of this the 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 chassis is completely um metal like all mini gt and they run the ground effects through the chassis so this whole piece here this lower splitter on the rocker the rear diffuser that's all cast metal so it's just a great car really really cool car i love it the ride height is just excellent no rubbing but you can see there's a little bit of wobble there but it really it's on magnification if you roll the car you can barely tell it, it's awesome i really really like this car so very very happy to have it um just just amazing take a look at it real quick windows are done really good um the taillights are great it's a funny thing and they could have probably put some black behind it because they look a little bit kind of toy like slightly just because it's so red i think the real one has a little bit more um detail to it but again 164 scale they got the separate exhaust tips everything is in place the wheels and tires are good there's my spacers I made, so that really helped the back spacing. That was the only thing that was a problem when you sit on this car; it would go in and out, and it would look terrible. So once that, once you get that back spacing that right on that car, it looks awesome. So let's take a look down the side. Look at that. Oops, got a little hair on there, a little fuzz. You can see the the mirror; it's not the right attitude, even though it's the softer stuff that moves. Look at the body panels. It's like we're looking at the real car. The sculpting on the hood, the sculpting on the hood, the, the front splitter, which again, all that stuff, the front bumper, the front bumper cover, that's all Shelby. That's all Shelby. Specific design. You can see down there the aggressive front end. So very, very excited to have that Shelby car. It would be nice to drive one. I've driven most high horsepower generation Mustangs, um, but not that one. So that would be kind of cool. Because it's a very expensive car. I mean, uh, you know, with markups and stuff, you know, everybody's going to probably sell that car. If they're not already spoken for, which they probably are. But, oh, geez, you're, you're talking six figures, you know, easily. Um, the GT350 has been done by Greenlight and some others, but not this one. And uh, this is the best. I didn't even bother wanting to get those. I pass them all the time. You know, they got truck tires on them and stuff like that. It's just not right. But when I saw this, that was definitely up my alley. If Mini GTs follow suit, does the other pony car, the, the Camaro Z01 or the Z28, that would be awesome. Hopefully they do it. So, some good stuff to look for uh, for 2022. We know that Auto World's going to be doing those first generation caravan and plymouth voyager vans so the 84 van the one that we've all had the matchbox with the sliding door they're going to be doing a real casting of that van so we're all excited about that mini gt is going to come out with uh, a 240z old school 
that's going to be really amazing, and some other stuff. So we're going to get to it shortly. When those cars hit, you know we're going to get them on the channel. I'm trying to figure out when we can get some big scale. i got to clear out this table. It's got a lot of cars on it. Once I get all that organized, we're going to try to get some bigger cars on film. i got to get these cars out. I know that 164th is the king for die cast content, but I have some stuff that I like sharing. So it's everything. You know, I got, I do have 164th, but 124th, 125th, I got 118. Um, 136, 134, all that stuff. So, they always deserve a little glance, anyway. You know, there might be a 5, 10, 15 minute video, but they deserve to be looked at. You know, we'll share them. But, hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, the channel's been growing, and hope everybody's been enjoying the, the content and all the vehicles. And, uh, yeah. Here we go. Well, thanks again. More to come. Till next time.